I've been playing guitar now for 17 years and I'd say I had reached an intermediate level after the first three to four, but I remained stuck in that lost intermediate plateau for around five years before I started to break out of that rut and enter what could be considered an advanced level of guitar playing. So today I'm going to share with you six things that I wish I had understood as soon as I became an intermediate guitar player that would have skyrocketed my progress early on. So it's my hope that I can encourage intermediates watching this to learn from my mistakes and stick around to the end of the video because number five is definitely the easiest change that you could start making in your playing today that will open so many doors for you. And I'm also gonna tell you how you can get a free mini course on using triads in your solos, so watch to the end. Number one, music theory is a language, not a set of rules that will harm your creativity. I don't care what any music theory deniers say, if you learn it the right way, it will only make you a better musician. You can absolutely enjoy playing guitar without it, but you're never smarter for not knowing something. How much do you need to know? Honestly, the fundamentals will take you very far. Understanding the basics like intervals, scale and chord construction, and diatonic harmony will allow you to communicate effectively with other musicians who understand the language of music. And those fundamentals will allow you to learn more advanced music theory concepts with ease in the future, like modes of the major scale, for example. Do not listen to people who, as soon as they hear any mention of the term music theory, cry out, oh well, Jimi Hendrix didn't know theory, Stevie Ray Vaughan didn't know theory, why do I need to know it? It's like, first of all, you're not those guys. And people only ever say this because they've had some negative experiences of learning music theory in the past and they think that they're doomed to never understand it. So for them, it's easier to cope and say it's a waste of time than it is to actually admit that it could make them better. So don't fall into that same trap. Learn the fundamentals of music theory from a guitar teacher who can show you how to apply it to the fretboard and you'll become such a better musician. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. And a word of advice would be to avoid music theory groups on Facebook. They are a bottomless pit of misinformation, heated arguments, personal insults, and confusion all around. There is no quicker way, I think, to develop a negative view of music theory than by spending time on forums like that. Number two, modes are not that important. Don't get me wrong, I love to solo with some of the modes of the major scale, and I even teach them in my courses. But us weirdo guitarists seem to be the only group of instrumentalists that have this bizarre obsession with mastering all seven. Of the seven major scale modes, I would argue that if you're aspiring to become a professional guitar player, meaning go out and play live on the road, do recording sessions, play function gigs, there are only four that are really worth knowing on a deep level. Ionian and Aeolian, which are the major and natural minor scales. And the other two would be Dorian and Mixolydian. Mixolydian is rife in rock, blues, and country music. Dorian has a ton of utility in several genres as well. And of the ones that I consider less important, Lydian, it sounds really pretty, but you won't find yourself having to use it all that often outside of maybe your own compositions. Phrygian even less so, and Locrian is almost useless. Understanding the construction of all seven major scale modes and where they come from is highly recommended, but giving equal practice time to the application of all seven is not. In my experience, the four that are essential to practice improvising with are Ionian, Aeolian, Dorian, and Mixolydian. Number three, if you're gonna learn the modes of the major scale, learn the major scale first. I cannot stress this enough. They are called the modes of the major scale and you want to try learning them when you don't even truly understand what the major scale is. This neglect of learning the scale from which the modes are derived held me back from making progress with modes for years. This all goes back to my first point about the importance of learning music theory fundamentals. They need to be understood first before you can even consider taking on the modes. I see there are guitar courses out there today that promise to teach you modes like without the boring theory part. And you know what? If you're purely a hobbyist who has no aspirations to go out and play live, do recording sessions or, or any sort of pro work as a guitar player, then who am I to tell you what to spend your money on? You know, if, if those types of products would 
help you have fun, then by all means go for it. If you have professional aspirations as a guitar player, or you're a hobbyist who just takes the guitar a bit more seriously and does want to understand music on a deeper level, avoid these boot shortcut courses like Wildfire. Because guess what? They're made by players who do know better, who do understand the theory and its importance, but they're also good at marketing. They know how to tap into your past negative experiences with music theory and use that to convince you to buy their product that doesn't require any theory. So if you wanna learn the modes of the major scale, learn the major scale first, learn how it's constructed, learn about the chords that are built from it, meaning diatonic harmony, learn to improvise with it, and then take on the modes. Number four is a short one, but finding your sound is something that takes years. It's not something that you can fast track. I feel like what helped me find my sound the most was to emulate my influences through learning and analyzing their playing styles over the years. Over that time, it's like you have all these influences that you can add into a pot and blend together. And eventually after years of practice, you will have your sound. I think that I realized for the first time that I had found my sound at the Summer Nam show in Nashville back in 2018. I was noodling around on some guitar at a booth and someone came over to me and they said that they recognized me from YouTube, but that they could actually tell it was me playing before they turned the corner and actually saw me with their own eyes, which was a cool moment of realization for me. I thought, hmm, I guess I have a recognizable sound now. So how long it will take is impossible to answer. Just trust in the process that over years of practice and emulating your heroes, it will happen eventually. Number five is huge. And I'd say it played the biggest role in bridging the gap from intermediate to advanced for me personally. But before I tell you what it is, I've got a free mini course that I want to gift you as a thank you for making it to this point in the video. Click the first link in the description box and you'll find a full mini course on using minor triads in your lead playing to highlight chord changes when soloing. If you've only ever tried soloing with scales, this will change the way that you think about improvisation forever. This includes downloadable tabs and a backing track to practice with and 20 minutes of 4K video lessons shot in this very studio. It's free for now, but it might not be for much longer, so grab it now. The link is in the description box. So number five is memorizing the notes on all strings will change your life. Most intermediate players struggle to identify notes on the G and B strings instantly. You should know that this is A flat without having to go down in octaves, which is what I used to do. Practicing the notes chromatically won't help much, but practicing the circle of fourths on each string will. B, B, A, D, G, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Using the circle of fourths for fretboard visualization is a huge part of the curriculum for my Bulletproof Guitar Player courses, and that's because the methods that I teach in those courses are the same ones that I learned back in my music student days. Practicing these note memorization, scale, and triad sequences using the circle of fourths for months eventually led to me feeling like I'd gone from being half blind when looking at the fretboard to then all of a sudden having full 2020 vision and having zero doubts about my note choices and full confidence that I could play what I wanted to play in any key on the fly. I often make the argument that there isn't a piano player in the world who can't tell you what every note on the keyboard is instantaneously. And if you want to become a great guitar player, then you should be able to do the same thing with your own instrument. And yeah, it's obviously so much easier to learn the notes of a keyboard than it is for the guitar, but so what? Are you gonna use that as an excuse for not doing it? I mean, I'd been playing for eight years or so before I put in the work to truly learn the notes on all six strings, which is crazy when I think about it. But let me tell you, the doors it opens for you as a guitarist are endless. I'd say the number one thing that separates beginners and intermediates from advanced professionals is whether or not they feel in control of the guitar. And how can you expect to feel in control of the guitar if you only know 20% of it? Learn the notes on the fretboard, it will change everything. Number six is there are no shortcuts to becoming a solid guitar player. There is no way around it. Reaching an advanced level as a guitarist is f hard work. And the only shortcut to getting there is to not waste your time with people who want to sell you their shortcut secret method to becoming a guitar god in six weeks. 
Avoid the bullshit, heed my advice in this video, and you will be on the path towards progress.